All right, time to play around with the black scooter. Um, this one has very low compression. Uh, it's about 10 or 20 pounds, which is nothing. Um, it's definitely not even close to what's needed. I'm going to go check out the motor on this wrecked scooter and if it has good enough compression I'm going to do a motor transplant um, really it's it's more than just a motor transplant it's basically a whole rear end because this is all one unit there's two bolts there's a bolt um, in the top here where this uh, suspension spring attaches to the frame and then there's a bolt on the bottom that everything kind of swivels on um, and then there's a couple of electrical connections that we'll have to take care of um, but these things are pretty well self-contained and pretty easy to swap over so I'm going to give that a shot well first I'm going to test compression if I have compression I'll go ahead and give that a shot because I really would like to see two complete scooters out of the three that I had in my stash we already know that that one works great so if you haven't seen the video for that one, I will link it in the cards up above and in the com or in the description down below. Well, at this point, I'm hoping this one has a working starter because, as you can see, the Kickstarter is missing from it, which is usually done when that Kickstarter gear goes out. I'll show you that in a second. Um, lots of oil fouling. It may be from it, the uh, the oil tank leaking. I've got, I've already disconnected all the wire, all the uh, electrical connections in the rear brake and so I should be able to um, pop out that bolt there and that bolt there and the whole unit should come off so I'm going to give that a shot now. Anybody that owns one of these sprees um, understands the problem with these, I think they call them moon gears. Um, it's just made out of a soft material and so the teeth end up getting chewed up and they go missing and once they're missing uh, this moon gear does not ride against the sprocket anymore and the sprocket doesn't engage with the what's called the driven gear which is this guy and so then this guy doesn't turn and you don't get a, a kickstart so a lot of times when that would happen, people would just remove the Kickstarter altogether. I may attempt to fix this. It requires some serious metal working. I would have to grind it down and then build it back up and weld and then recut the gear um, with my bandsaw or with a sander or something with a cutoff wheel or something that I could cut the teeth with. Um, I don't have real high hopes of saving this but I am willing to give it a shot. Alright, so I got it out of the old scooter. I got the motor out. I tested the starter to make sure that it actually worked, which it does, which is nice, because now I've got my compression tester hooked up. And I'm going, I'm just about to test compression for the first time right now. Well, it doesn't look promising. It says 30. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I've heard bad things about these Harbor Freight compression testers. Just as a point of reference, on my red uh, Passport scooter, I tested compression on it and it only came up as like 30 or 40. And that thing runs fine. So I'm going to proceed with this and see if I can't get it to run um, but first I'm going to take it out into this on the driveway and give it a good cleaning because it's filthy and then I'll go ahead and pull off this uh, this one that's installed on the scooter and do the transplant 
Okay, so I'm dealing with a leak on the carburetor, and at first I thought it was maybe a seal, and I was kind of bummed about it, but it, it turned out to be the feed hose. It's made out of some type of, I don't think that's vinyl or anything, it's something really soft. It's not um, latex, but it might be like neoprene or something. I don't think that's compatible with gasoline. So I got some new uh, chainsaw 3 16 fuel, fuel line, and uh, I'm just going to swap it out, and um, hopefully that'll fix the problem. Um, I don't really have a good way of securing it on the barb. Um, previous owner had used one of these hose clamps, and that might have also contributed to the leak, but uh, we'll see what I can do. So I got the new motor attached. Well, new. The backup motor, I guess. Um, feels like I've got better compression on it. We'll give it a shot in just a minute. Um, I put the carburetor on and got fl fuel flowing to it and it was leaking really bad and I think it was just this old fuel line. I don't think it's even fuel line that was being used. I'm not sure what this is, but um, the gasoline really had a uh, time with it. And I, So I went to the store and I bought a new this is actual fuel line, this is chainsaw fuel line, so it should work just fine. i got to figure out if I want to keep this monster um, fuel filter that the previous owner had put in. Uh, I mean, it's it's nice, but it's huge. And uh, I don't know if the fuel line will fit over it, so we're going to give that a shot. Um, so next time you see this, this will all be put together. All right, um, I've got it all hooked back up. I'm having trouble getting fuel coming out of the pet cock, so I might have to take that apart and clean it, or maybe replace it. I'm not sure, but I think I've got enough fuel in the bowl, and I can use some starting fluid to maybe get it to fire up. We're gonna find out right now. garage up with smoke and blew out my eardrums but it seems to be working and the impulse line is doing what it's supposed to be doing it's now it's getting gas so I've got to tweak the uh, carburetor you know and get it to idle smoothly I haven't even given it gas I'm gonna put the um, muffler on it now just so it's not so loud and, and then get it back up and running and start messing with it Before I put all the fenders back on, I do have a warp in the tire right here, or in the wheel. You see that? It's dented. So I'm going to try to tap that out a little bit.
The other motor that I just took off has the same exact dent, but it's not as bad, so I might actually swap the wheels on this one. I'm not sure yet. Okay, so I keep losing track of which one's which, and so it makes sense what I just, what I had to do here. So I pulled this one off of the engine that's currently installed on the scooter, and this is the one with the really bad, really bad dent in it, and it makes sense because the, the, the uh, wrecked scooter that I got that engine off of, it was rear-ended, and I bet you that's part of that getting rear-ended. Now this one, I don't know why this one has a small dent in it, but that small dent is going to be a lot easier to take out than that big one. So I'm going to go ahead and swap these wheels out. Well, first I'm going to hammer out this dent, and then I'm going to swap these wheels out. This wheel actually looks a lot nicer than this one. But as long as this one works, it really doesn't matter. Okay, it's the next day. I think I've already covered fixing the fuel system. It runs. Um, I tried taking it out, but the tires are flat, and I didn't have a pump with a you know, with a connection small enough to fit. Because it's really hard to get the end of a bicycle pump inside those spokes so that's gonna have to wait until I can get something for my air compressor the, what I'm dealing with right now is that the clutch is supposed to automatically engage at a certain RPM but the problem with this one is that it's always engaged no matter what the RPM is and so either that clutch is damaged or it's just stuck or it was put together wrong by a previous owner so I've got this clutch on the old motor that used to be on this black scooter that's it's free it's it spins freely um, it's not it's not engaged um, and I'm going to pull this cover off and check out this clutch, take it apart and see if there's any difference. And if not, hopefully I'll be able to replace, I'll just be able to swap them out. So that is what I'm gonna try right now. Well, since I'm still rolling, um, so I took the two apart. Um, this one, the clutch plates are nice and firmly seated. And in this one, they're loose. You see that? And they're all chewed up. And look what I found. Oop, there, it just fell out. A clutch spring. So, clutch is bad on this one. Luckily, I have a backup. That's really been kind of the thing with all three of these scooters is I've been able to take these three scooters and turn them into two three non-running scooters and turning turn them into two running scooters so I don't know how I'm gonna get this off I gonna have to do some research alright I think we're back in business I'm gonna give it fire it up and we'll see if that uh, back wheel continues to spin Yeah, alright, so 
that clutch was just stuck open and it didn't have any springs keeping the the clutch pads from coming out and making contact with the bell housing which makes the wheel turn so now this one has nice tight springs when i rev it up it should go so there you go Talk about the next step here. One thing I did fail to address, which I'm going to need to, is I'm missing the breather tube that goes from the carburetor into the air box. So I'm going to have to come up with something creative because I don't have one in my set of spare parts. It's the one part that I didn't have at least two of. So. Um, also yesterday, I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I did check to make sure the oiler was still running, which it does, so that's good. Um, it's always nice to have these do the way they're supposed to, so you can have your separate oil reservoir and have it mix for you instead of trying to keep pre-mix in the tank. That way I can just run to any gas station and fill up at any time um, and not have to worry about mixing the gas in a container first and then putting it in. So, I don't know what I'm going to do about this. i got to think about it. I'm probably just going to use some hose, you know, some like uh, washing machine hose or something and try to figure out a way to get it to stay inside here as well as clamp it to this piece here. Uh, it does still have a filter in there. It just doesn't have the hose. I think all that's left is attaching all the outside stuff um, this this kickstarter gear is bad I'm gonna put the kickstart lever back on but it, the, the gear is bad so you won't be able to use the kickstart but it's got a good starter um, I need to air up the tires and take it around and tune the carburetor but I can do that um, anytime and um, I guess I have to do that before I put the side covers on because I won't be able to get to the carburetor as easily with the side you still can but it's just difficult, it's cumbersome. So I tied up my wiring, uh, get the kickstart lever back on like I said, and uh, then it's pretty much good to go.